From our previous episode, we examined the Titanic's changing head trim, the forward angles she reached as she dipped deeper into the Atlantic. But the ship's descent was not defined by pitch alone. Survivor testimonies reveal that the Titanic did not sink on a perfectly level keel. Instead, she rolled noticeably from port to starboard at a various moments throughout the disaster. In this second and final episode, we applied the evidence-based approach used in our analysis of her forward angles. By correlating survivor accounts, identifying recurring descriptions, and isolating key sequences, we reconstruct the moments when the Titanic developed measurable lists during her final hours. This method allows us to establish a clearer timeline of how the ship behaved laterally, how she leaned, corrected, and shifted as flooding patterns changed and structural stresses intensified. Throughout this qualitative reconstruction, supported by carefully cross-referenced testimony, we move one step closer to understanding the subtle but critical motions that shape the Titanic's final moments. The plotting of the Titanic's list is comparatively easier to analyze than her trim, largely because changes in list can be correlated with the recorded lifeboat launch times and survivor accounts and descriptions of when the ship had tilted. As with earlier appendices, this segment uses a visual, reconstruction-based method by plotting key moments of the sinking through blender simulations. Unlike the quantitative approach, where simulations often simulate the ship completely rolling over, as seen in the final word theory, popularized by James Cameron. This segment relies exclusively on qualitative evidence and survivor testimony analysis. However, as the simulation in the final word rolled out, the list was only applied to make sure that it still accounts for survivor testimonies. Because this investigation depends entirely on eyewitness accounts, there is no need to determine a new AFBP or pivot point. For consistency with the head trim study, this segment assumes the same standardized pivot point positioning or the same established rotation axis when we determine the lists. Blender serves here as a visualization tool. Even with gaps in the timeline, the software allows a smooth and realistic interpolation of motion between keyframes. This makes it possible to recreate each documented list using survivor descriptions and lightweight timing cross-references. Key moment number one the pre-collision port list. Before or during the iceberg impact, the Titanic already carried a slight list to port of roughly 2.5 to 3 degrees. This was caused by the coal fire in Coal Bunker W, located on the starboard side of Stokehold No. 9 in Boiler Room 5. To control the fire, crew members shoveled the burning coal toward the port side, shifting weight unevenly. Although this list had no direct role in the sinking, the redistributed coal later became a minor contributing factor to the renewed port list observed deeper into the disaster. Around 11.45 to 11.50 p.m., our next key moment is after the immediate post-collision starboard list. Within 5 to 10 minutes of the collision, the inclinometer recorded a starboard list of approximately around 5 or even 5.5 degrees. This aligns with the damage pattern. The iceberg struck the starboard side, flooding the peak tank, number one hold, the starboard portions of holds two and three, the fireman's passage, boiler room six, and the starboard coal bunker in boiler room five. Survivor accounts consistently describe flooding concentrated on the starboard side, causing the ship to lean in that direction. Our next key moment is right about 1.20 a.m. to 1.35 a.m. in Lifeboats 9 and 16. During the launch of Lifeboats 9 and 16, several survivors reported that the Titanic showed no noticeable list. In the U.S. Senate inquiry, William Ward was asked to quote, Was she listing badly when you lowered boat 9? He replied, No, sir. She was not listing at all. She was down by the head, but not listing. This neutral phase likely marked the equalization of the earlier starboard list, signaling a transition moment. Flooding had began to spread unevenly, while the earlier coal redistribution at the beginning of the flooding of Scotland Road now affected the ship's balance, 
gradually shifting the list back to port, to which along this process would cause the ship to enter temporarily back to an even keel. This is as reported by people in lifeboats 9 and 16 who reported barely any list during the sinking. Our next key moment is right about 1.45 to 1.55 a.m. The heavy port list as reported from Lifeboat 10. By the time Lifeboat 10 was launched, survivors like Yaugin and Evans observed a gap of about 2.5 feet between the lifeboat and the Titanic side. Visual evidence of a pronounced port list when replicated in Blender, this equates to a tilt of approximately 10 degrees. While Samuel Halpern's latest analysis suggests a possible 15 degree list, such a value appears excessive as it would have severely hindered movement on deck. Simulations indicate a more realistic maximum list of about 11 to 13 degrees, which likely persisted through the launch of Collapsible D around 2.05 a.m. Right about then by 2.05 a.m. to 2.10 a.m., there was a gradual reduction of the list to port. As water continued to advance into boiler rooms 4 and 3, flooding likely redistributed itself, reducing the port list to about 8.5 to 9 degrees. No survivor directly described this intermediate stage, but the timing aligns with later accounts of the ship to which it returned toward an even keel. As it was theorized later on that the reason why the ship returned to an even keel was due to the fact that the Titanic's boiler room 4 and 3 had redistributed its flooding process, causing the ship to return suddenly into an even keel. Around 2.16 to 2.17 a.m., Jack Bayard noted that the Titanic had momentarily appeared level or even slightly list to starboard, suggesting internal flooding had reached a brief state of equilibrium. Finally, around 2.17 a.m., right before the Titanic began to break apart, in the closing minutes, the Titanic developed a renewed and increasingly severe starboard list. Survivor testimony combined with analysis of all damage suggests the ship's port side experienced significant structural tension as the ship approached breakup. This constraint, combined with shifting water levels, caused the starboard roll. Some survivors, notably like Edward Bean and Washington Dodge, testified that the ship did indeed rock from port to starboard at a certain point during her sinking, or considering it to be occurring somewhere near the final plunge. Describing the motion as being like an eggshell. However, this movement is highly debated. Such accounts could correspond to the stern rocking as it settled after the breakup, rather than the entire ship shifting. If rocking did occur, it likely represented the Titanic's final attempt to maintain equilibrium after briefly reaching an even keel, reflecting the internal redistribution of flooding and stresses before the stern's violent plunge.
With this, we have now established the key datasets necessary to understand the Titanic sinking. As with our previous data collection, any missing intermediate points are automatically interpolated in Blender at 10 minute intervals, creating a continuous and smooth representation of the ship's motion. This method allows us to synchronize the port starboard list with the head trim conditions producing a fully visualized reconstruction of the RMS Titanic's final design. By combining these datasets, we gain a comprehensive understanding of the ship's behavior, observing how she gradually dipped, shifted, and responded to internal flooding and structural stresses. And with this, our journey comes to a close by weaving together survivor testimonies, forensic analysis, and visual simulations, we have reconstructed the Titanic's final hours. With unprecedented clarity, the timeline we have built not only reveals the mechanics of her sinking, but also honors the human experience within it. Moments of courage, fear, and resilience as the ship met its tragic end. Through this combination of science and story, we glimpse both in the technical reality and the human tragedy of one of the most infamous maritime disasters. Thank you for watching and may your journeys always be safe. Smooth sailing.